Today on the grid, the girls are taking over. Scott and Eric are out traveling back from Scotland from the Worldwide Photo Walk, so I'll be your host today. And when the boys are away, the girls will play. So co-hosting with me, she's a rock star. She came from afar to host me, to host with me. She could not drive in her car. She's the queen at the Photoshop toolbar. Her colorful self-portraits and family creations are unique and bizarre, but everything she does and her bright, vivid pics are so on par. You might find her at Disney at a bar or on a streetcar. <laughs> she should definitely be on your radar. The one and only Hilmar. All coming up on today's show. Grid is brought to you by Platypod, the tripod alternative that is changing the world. Everybody has a Platypod. You should too. Go to platypod.com. Well, hey, hey, everyone. Welcome to the grid today. I will be your host. Christina's in the house with Kathy Perupski as our in studio guest. And um, Hilmar is going to be co-hosting with us today, too. Um, she was going to drive over here, but um, had an emergency. So she'll be hosting with us um, from Orlando at her, in her own studio. Hi, Hilmar. Hello, guys. I miss you so much. I'm so excited to be here on an all-girls episode. This That's is right. so, so cool. We're taking over. That's right. We decided to Thank you so do much, Christina, girls. for that intro. That was beautiful. <laughs> I'm going to get you writing there about me on my website. I always struggle with that. I love what you write there. <laughs> that was awesome. Wasn't that hard, um, given all the stuff that you've created. You inspire me so much, and um, I just love your work. So it was fun for uh, me to put together. Well, I well hope deserved. to see you guys in a Disney bar too soon, as you <laughs> said there. <laughs> That'll be uh, next time, right? Yeah, soon. Um, so on today's show, we are going to bring in different guests that um, are the women that are in the photography industry. And um, of course, we couldn't bring everyone, but um, I did invite a few guests from some of the instructor lineup at Photoshop World this year. So later on today, we'll have Karen Hutton, Kaylee Greer, and Victoria Pavlov all joining us. Um, but first, I do want to kind of talk about the Worldwide Photo Walk. That was the big thing that happened this past Saturday. And um, I'm a huge fan of this event because everything we do is all to raise donations for the Springs of Hope organization. And... Um, this woman basically was from the U.S., went and traveled over to Kenya, and when she came home, she was like, I am not going to live here anymore, and she moved over to Kenya just to start this organization so that she could feed and clothe and educate these children that um, inspired her. And so this year, um, you know, we raised money for them. And um, I wanted to give some shout outs to people that helped make big contributions this year. So um, Bill Morgan Stern, thank you so much. He made a really big contribution of $1,000. That's incredible. Um, we appreciate that so very much. Um, Sonia Miranda and Robert Norris, other big donors. Um, Kevin Thiessen, Ardesh Patel, Greg Ott, Eckhard Alex. Nell Camp, Patricia Lowry, Anne May, Carolyn Trimble, Stephen Everhart, Antoinette Cro Crockwell, Rajiv Jayaraman, I hope I said that right, Lewis Plate, Gary Sindel, and Pamela Colbert. Um, you guys all, just thank you so much for your big contributions. We appreciate it so much. It does go to helping those children um, stay educated, get their clothing and food, educational materials and supplies. Um, one of the things that I know, being an insider, that, you know, once these kids grow up, they actually, um, she helps get them started in doing other jobs, like, so that they can be self-sufficient. And so whether it's, like, creating um, shoes, making shoes, or doing some kind of side business um, to keep them um, able to take care of themselves. And then 
for some time, she'll even have them um, still feed them. So, you know, they might come back and be like, I just need some help with some food. And so she really does, um, it goes That's to good wonderful. causes. Everything that um, we give them goes to a really, really good cause. And if, it, if you haven't donated yet, you can still do so. Um, you can donate at www.worldwidephotowalk.com. And um, we're going to be giving out prizes to people that from their walks that we had um, get submissions for. So that'll be another, I'm sure you'll, you, you can tune in and we'll give out some shout outs to the winners at a different episode. Um, so Hilmar, tell me, you've done worldwide photo walks in the past. Um, yes, what are, what are some of your favorite memories? Oh, my first one was, I think that it was October of 2011. And since then I fell in love with it. The first one was in Epcot. Then after that, I started doing my own. So one of my favorite memories was one that we did in Epcot. I used to co-host them with Mark Rodriguez. So we um, co-host one in Epcot during the Food and Wine Festival. It was a full book. It was 50 people in there. There was no chance of rain. Um, we had plans to go around in every single country, take pictures, drink a little bit here, eat a little bit there. It was so fantastic. As soon as, it, as we start walking, it start raining out of nowhere. One of those crazy um, Florida storms and it rained the whole day. So most of the people left because it was like impossible with your gear to be there. But obviously we were like, we're gonna make the best out of it. So we will go to one country. We will stay there for a little while, make the fool of ourselves just to entertain everybody. Um, we went to Japan and in the store, they dress up all up like geishas and all of that. So everybody took pictures of us. Then we waited a little bit and we will run to the next country. Like in, in, in Morocco, Mark and I did belly dancing for everybody. <laughs> we got all dressed up again. I mean, we had the best time ever. One of my shoes, I had these sandals, it broke. So I had to work out barefoot, like half of the park. It was oh, gross, no. but we had so much fun. It was just fantastic. Then we did another year, um, one in, City Walk by Universal Studios, and we closed it in this karaoke bar. That is, um, it's not a regular karaoke, it's a phone karaoke. You actually have like the live band behind you, and you have backup singers. So it's like, oh. it makes you feel like you're in, like you're, in the you're whole... actually in a band. <laughs> Were you with Mark again for this one? Yes, and oh, I'm yeah. going to show you the picture. And this is so much fun because usually I, I love this place. When you go to this place, the people that go are usually from some other state. So they don't really care if they make the fool of our of themselves because they don't know anybody. So it's just, just a comedy show. That's like, hilarious. you have no idea. I love going to the place. And every time that I do, I lose my voice because I laugh and I scream so much. So um, I'm going to show you some of the pictures. I couldn't find all of them, but I have a few. Okay. And But I'm going to start with the ones with Mark Rodriguez because in those things, he will take a costumes with him and he will just get on the stage and sing in a full costume. <laughs> they were like so much fun. Like if... In our photo walk, every time that we did one, I mean, if you wanted to be entertained, you, we didn't take much, much, many pictures, but it was about everybody having a great time. It was about entertaining the people that were with us. It was just about conversation, about making friendships, about having a whole, a drink here and there. It was community. Oh. It sounds like yeah, you know, it building was a community. So and you and Mark at, together, I can only imagine <laughs> how entertaining that was, Hilmar. Those were the best uh, friends in those photo walks. It's, it's just amazing. It's just the best place to go. Like if you really want to, to get with people, um, this is Mark Rodriguez. I don't know if you guys can see. Let us can see. you guys see my screen? Can somebody tell you there? Looks like it. Yeah, so yep. this is uh, Mark Rodriguez. 
um, in that karaoke place, but he actually had another costume with him. And they were, this was during the Google Plus time, and we used to take pictures with these so costumes. So I'm not seeing the full screen picture, it. though. I'm just seeing the like, the, um, like a grid of some sort. Can you see it like this click now? Click on the photo. Yeah, maybe double click the photo. I did. I did. Oh, Let me maybe try it's not to mirroring do... right or something. Yeah. Yeah, I did click on it. You cannot see I'm as, as big. I, I'm clicking on it and they come full screen on my on my screen. Aww. I want to show you these pictures because they're so much fun. It looks like we're looking at like the secondary screen. Like if it wasn't mirroring. You know, okay, so maybe you have to um, share you know all, the do? whole screen top. I know um, it'll say share the whole desktop or something like that. When you go to share, make can sure you to click see that. now? Does it work now? Mm. No. How about now? Maybe stop sharing and then we'll reshare. Make sure to click share whole entire desktop when um, okay. it asks you. All right. So and while you're doing that, I know actually Kathy yeah. went on one this year. I did. And so she was at one in Tampa Bay, right? Yep. Tampa Bay Strobus Group, Daryl Johnson, um, hosted the walk. And I think he's done this several years in a row. So I was out there uh, with my Strobus Group, which is a community group. And uh, I want to say... 50 50 so showed up it was a night shoot uh we did the tampa walk on the river walk he did a great job a lot of great photos i think there's some photos to show that have been coming in so these are from a variety of the walkers that registered for the event so these are just a few that are starting to come in from daryl johnson i want to make sure he gets the shout out because he was the registered leader and these are just various um attendees that came that registered for the walk that are submitting some photos now they did a great job it was a great downtown tampa if no one's been on the river walk is amazing lots of lots of neat lighting opportunities down there yeah it's lit really well i love the water you have those reflections mm -hmm. that you can get from the water and um I'm sure it was nicer to be out there at night and not midday yes. in yes. Florida. Yes, it was nice to have a night walk. I was, um, hats off to Daryl for doing that. Uh, I love that he did it and he did a little pre-class for those who wanted to get some pointers and tips. So thank you, Daryl. Um, appreciate you doing that for the community. Awesome. Thank you, Daryl. Good job. Thank you, Daryl. Hope you're out there listening, watching. And then, Hilmar, did you get a chance to... Um, I cannot get it to work with me. I was just trying to send it over to Jason on an email. Okay. You're going to want to send it to yeah. me, okay? Copy me on that one. Okay. That's easier for you to send it to you, though. Yeah, because Jason's not in the control room today. I've got Jason behind the cameras and Eric's in the um, control room today. And I don't have Eric's email. So, yeah, email <laughs> to me. I'll forward it to him. We'll bring it back into the show. Um, they got to see who Mark awesome. is, but if you don't know Mark, you should know Mark. Yeah, yeah, Mark, Mark Rodriguez. Rodriguez. All right, yeah. well, we're going to have to take a break pretty soon. So before we do that, I just want to um, tell everyone what the prizes are this week. So that way people can start entering in the chat what they might want to win. Um, first thing that we've got is the travel photography book with Scott, written by Scott Kelby. Um, this has been a great popular book. Um, that's been doing really, really well. And so if you're going to be traveling, definitely pick up that book. He's also got his new book, How Do I Do That in Lightroom? And that um, recently we just got some printed copies in the studio. So that means if you enter, you will get your printed version of the book. And um, you can sell, buy that now online. It's um, been updated. It's the third edition. And then what you got there, Kathy? Platypod, the gooseneck. Stackable mounts. Those are awesome. They're so flexible and bendy. You can um, attach a light to it if you want an extra little light, or um, you can use it in so many different ways to attach things. And then also, we're going to be giving away On One Effects 2022 to some lucky winner. And um, I know everybody loves their software and all the special effects that it can do. And then we've also got the V flat world. I'm so excited um, about V flat world. Um, they're one of our new sponsors and um, 
it started because we really needed some V-flats in the studio. And then I had worked with a photographer who had some from V-flat world and they actually collapsed. And I got to use it last week and it was wonderful. I loved it. It was my first experience with it. Uh -huh. We did the class. Yes. And the thing about it is that if you need to travel because they're collapsible, they um, pack up really well for anything on the go. So some lucky winner is going to get one V flat um, shipped. It has to be from the U.S. So if you want to win, please make sure you have a U.S. address to ship to. And then also we'll be giving away one duo boards extra large. That's for product photography. It comes with two boards and on each side is a different um, setup. So you really get four different kind of looks um, with it. Um, plus, if you want a discount, anyone watching can get a 10% discount if you go to vflatworld.com and use the code KELBY10 at checkout. Finally, make sure to watch Smug Mugs This Lens series. We have them um, to check out during our breaks. Uh, they've created a different series of little um, a mini series that is all about the power of the camera lens to change perspectives, capture memories, and make an impact in people's lives. So make sure you check that out during one of our breaks. And um, other than that, we'll, uh, coming up next, we'll have Karen Hutton live. Karen Hutton. I'm Hilmar Smith, and this is my new class, Creating Family Portraits for Special Occasions. This is an amazing way that you can learn how to incorporate different kind of ideas into your photography business that will bring you money throughout the year. We're gonna be doing three live shoots, one with a toddler. So I will teach you how to photograph a toddler and keep them entertained and get mom and dad relaxed throughout the photo shoot. Then we're gonna be photographing a girl and she's gonna be using these pictures for her special occasion, for a, as an invitation for her birthday party. And then I'm gonna be showing you how to photograph your own family the way that I do photograph my own. A step up your photography game, don't put yourself in a box. And join me in my new class at kelbyone.com. As a radiologist, I analyze images, trying to figure out what's wrong with the human body. As a photographer, I'm essentially looking for what is right. I'm trying to find that perfect arrangement of visual elements in nature where nothing is wrong. Radiology is all shades of gray. There is no color. So when you're released into the outdoors, you're going to embrace that color wholeheartedly. You will chase after it and you'll express yourself through it. I find it important that you emotionally connect with the scene before you photograph it. When I feel very much present in that moment, that's when the most meaningful images will come. That is my therapy and that is the therapy I'm offering to others through those visuals. Hey, I'm Eric Kuna, and I just wrapped up filming a class on the new Canon R3 for Kelby One. And we went over everything to do with the buttons, the dials, the settings with this camera. But not only that, this camera is built all around speed, right? And it's all about that performance. So if you're that person who's interested about learning about this camera, maybe you haven't purchased it yet, or you've purchased it and you're wanting to know all those settings, come join me in my class over at kelbyone.com going over all the new features in the Canon R3. This segment of The Grid is brought to you by b &H Photo, the professional source since 1973. I really don't need these. And we are back. We're back to our all-girl show. Taking over since the boys are out. I hope that um, if Scott and Eric are watching that you guys are having a 
great safe travels on your way home and that you had a great time out in Scotland. We can't wait to see some of the pictures you guys got from the Worldwide Photo Walk Send as photos. well. Send photos. So now um, we were able to get Karen on the line. So Karen Hutton is here with us. Um, Thank you. Hello, hey, Karen. Karen. How are you? Oh, my you? face is huge. My face is enormous. Uh, <laughs> I'm good. Experiencing a few technical difficulties, doing my best to paddle upstream. You're in the field, <laughs> right? Yeah. I'm in, I'm in the field, just like another cow in the field. <laughs> Thank you so I'm much for taking the time. In my field. <laughs> yeah, she um, is in a project right now and was so gracious to agree to still join us. Um, I was like, even if it's just for a short period, you know, we just want to see how you're doing and check in. Um, Karen Hutton is one of my favorites to work with. I just Me adore too. her. Love you, Karen. Love you guys. If I were there, I'd hug you right now and embarrass us all. Virtual. <laughs> Virtual hugs. Hug, hug. Who oh, doesn't love Karen? Karen just always brings some magical light to every everywhere she is. Oh, I'm just reflecting yours. Oh. <laughs> we were talking about that today. Yeah, yes. we were. We were talking about how we can mirror each other's energies and stuff um, yeah. at lunch. And Karen's is always great. Always great. Yes. Well, thanks. One of the things I was always... My face is huge. <laughs> she can't get over her face. It One of the great, things Karen. that um, I love about Karen is just she's so talented. She does voiceover work as well and, um, you know, is just one of those people that um, is just a true artist. And so, Karen, um, I wanted to ask you, you know, what was that pivotal moment where you, like, decided that you wanted to become a photographer? Well, you know, interestingly, I never didn't want to be a photographer. I always wanted to be a photographer. Well, except for when I wanted to be a horse trainer and a figure skater and an actor and a dancer and a teacher of all those things. But except for those, I always wanted to be uh, a photographer. It's just that when I studied it in school, the dark room chemicals really made me sick. Oh. So I had to, you know, I had a long list of things I wanted to do. So I had to go down the list and go, all right, what's next? You know, it was like age specific too, because I wanted to figure skate and I wanted to dance and you got to do that when you're young. So right. we started there and went and went from there. <laughs> wow. Um, so I know one of your genres is like landscapes, right? And, um, yep. and I just love your beautiful pictures. I've, you know, been lucky to, as someone that works with you, I got one of her Christmas cards with this beautiful photo from hers. And um, I actually still keep it in my office, by the way. I have it in there. Um, and so, um, and whenever she has to send me photos for things, like if we're doing a conference or something, they have to send me assets. And um, I'm always like, ooh, look at what Karen sent. So, but I did have a question for you. What is your go-to gear for when you are shooting landscapes? Um, you're talking about like camera brand or everything. Just like if you had to pack a bag and just when you're out and doing landscape, I'm sure everybody would like to know what is your go-to gear for. So, okay. So I'm, um, I'm a Fujifilm professional ex photographer. So Fujifilm is my, my gear. So depending on what I'm doing, usually I pack my G one of my GFXs right now. It's the hundred S and then, um, you know, it really depends on the subject, but, uh, like know, what kind of a lens too? Well, yeah. So my go-to is, you know, and it, usually either the 32 to 64 or something a little wider. Like I'll usually take two lenses in my GFX kit, um, so that I can either, depending on where I'm going, either go wide in mid zoom or, uh, telephoto in mid zoom, but I always do the mid zoom you know, 32 to 64. If I'm packing my X series system, it's always the 18 to 135. And if I can haul it up a hill, the 100 to 400. Wow. And um, I remember recently you were telling me about this project that you had to do where it was like you were challenged to go do landscapes, but all in macro, right? And so yep. I was wondering if, um, you know, what was that like for you? And 
what did you walk away from after having to do that challenge? What did you learn from it? Okay, it was tremendous, I gotta say. In fact, I recommend anybody who is struggling with, you know, how do I see different, just grab a lens you don't normally use and commit yourself to using that. So I had to do a project for Fujifilm and I had to use my GFX 100S and a, and a GF120 macro and choose a national park. So I chose Zion National Park, which I'd always wanted to go to, never been. And, um, cause you know, who doesn't like the challenge of a macro lens in a national park for a national campaign at a park you've never been to? Because, you know, I just raised the stakes. But <laughs> That's what we love about you, Karen. I, you know, because it's, it's just not entertaining enough unless, you know, the sky's the limit. So what I learned was, okay, you know how there's some places that um, no matter how you know, Zion National Park is one of those places where no, no matter, like if you're there, you can't stop seeing the trillions of images that have been shot there. And how do you see anything original? Because all you can see is everybody else's images, right? Right. So yeah. if you want to just short circuit that, just stick a macro lens on, you, you don't see anything like anybody else does. <laughs> and so it just like does this thing to your brain where all of a sudden it's like, oh, I didn't think to look at that. I didn't think to look that way. So the macro lens was a huge revelation because yeah, I shot macro and in so doing, um, discovered like the heartbeat of the place, but also the mid ranges and you know, the, the smaller stories. And then I did some, you know, some big panos also just held it vertical and did you know some panos and stacked one or two of them so i had my big epic shots too so i didn't miss anything but you can with a with a dramatic dramatically different lens choice like that you can stand in the same place a trillion other people have stood before and you'll take a different picture just by virtue of carrying a really different lens like that that's fascinating i love that you um you know, pointed that out. I was like, if you, you know, want to just do something different, just use a different lens that you're not um, accustomed to using, and then that will like. Oh, it'll, and it'll mess you. It'll mess your head up. It'll make you go, I can't do this. Oh my god! You'll freak out. The whole thing. Whatever. Get over it. And then start figuring out how that lens sees. Yeah. So it's it's a trip. It's really a trip, and it'll it'll totally like scramble your brain for a that minute so. and then you'll just all of a sudden you know the choir of angels but i'm pretty sure yeah. that when you go somewhere else next time yeah. you're gonna try to see the way that you saw with the macro lens so it's something that is gonna be now in you to try to see things in a different way and i think that's the beauty when you try something different and when you i think that there is a magical creative place when you have just so little. I think that it makes your brain awakens to to some kind of magic that you cannot see when you have too many things on your favor. Exactly. And don't you find, Hilmar, that limitation is like the mother of invention and is the mother of creative vision? Because the more you limit yourself, the deeper you have to dig. And yes. I don't mean dig, yes. I don't mean dig in your hole. I mean digging to find the gold. And you do. Mm -hmm. And I say it's, it love is, adding, it's, I say it's like adding to your I bag of tricks. Everybody. Like that, once you get that mastered, like Karen, you took that macro out and you used it and used it. And at first it was, I can't do this. And now you've mastered it. So it's in that bag of tricks because Hilmar said bringing it's about magic. So yes, in my magical bag, when you push yourself out of that comfort zone, that's now in your bag of tricks when you need that. Well, you know, it, you said something interesting, which I'm um, not calling you out. <laughs> I'm just like, it's an interesting thing because you just said I mastered it. I don't feel like I've mastered it. I feel like I'm just not scared to try now. Yes, because experienced I, I, it is probably a better word. Well, yeah, and, and I think that's a, a valuable thing to point out to people. People often think, oh, well, you've really mastered it. You really know what you're doing. But it's, it's like, I learned this when I was acting. Like if you're doing a show like eight nights a week, Every single show you do, you have to start from scratch. You, you know, you've done your homework, you know, your part. It's not like you have to pretend like you don't know anything. But you have to start with that, you know, clean slate, fresh start. You can't rely on anything you did before. You've got you to gotta generate it from the moment, again, as if it were the first time. 
And I find that that's just creativity, that you have to have that those fresh eyes and not assume. The minute you think you know something, you don't know nothing. So true. I love that. I love that yes. so much. Yes, definitely. Well, Karen is going to be one of our uh, instructors at Photoshop World this year. Karen, is there anything that um, you can share with us maybe or that you're excited about for your class that people might want to um, tune into yes. your class for? Actually, I'm really excited about it. We'll see how well it works. You'll have to tell me. But what I'm doing is, you know, I always talk about vision and I always talk about the inner game and this and that. This time, I decided to... Well, set the stage with some of that stuff, but then start calling out landscape rules and saying, all right, is this a good rule? Is this a bad rule? Should you break it? Should you not? But how can it serve your vision? Because some of these rules that we have, they're overwhelming. I, I just watch landscape photographers, young ones especially, just freak out because they're like, I'm not going to get it right. Everything's got to be perfect. And they're afraid to try anything. Whereas if you have your vision first and you know what the what the feels are that you want to convey you can cherry pick your rules to serve you they become you know your servants and you don't use the ones that don't apply and it gets to be a lot more fun because i notice a lot of landscape photographers are very serious right well i'm, I'm excited like, you must be tired <laughs> i'll definitely be watching your class yay Me too. Yay! <laughs> and then Yay! replays will be available for a whole year. So if you miss it, um, you can always check out the replay. And if you want to sign up for Photoshop World, you can go to photoshopworld.com and join us. It's going to be four days of fun, um, amazing instructors. We've got three different tracks um, pretty much all day long. And um, so many wonderful people that we really strive to find the best at what they do and bring them to our audience so that way you guys can... Um, be trained from the best. Um, finally, I'm going to give out some shout outs um, to people that are watching. Um, Sean Elizabeth says, hello, ladies. From She's from the UK, and she's also going to be one of our other Photoshop World instructors. We've got Nina in the chat saying good afternoon from a sunny PA. Do you want to say some, Kathy? Got Paula Stone says, hey, ladies. So glad to have a ladies day. Um, thank you, Paula. Lisa, good afternoon from Atlanta. Diane Eckberg Arnold, good morning from San Diego. And e e Angela? Angela Worcester Leishing. Hi from South Africa. Hello, South Africa. Hello. Pin Pin is wow, hi from Quebec. Um, all over. Yeah, fantastic. Wow, this People is from all over the world joining us. Yes. Excited to do our ladies show. Karen, thank you so much for joining us. You're always a pleasure Such to work with, be around, and inspiration to all of us. So, All right. Thank you so much for having me on. Big hugs and kisses all around. And uh, have a fantastic rest of your day. You too. To we you. love you, Karen. Love you, Karen. Ciao. <laughs> we'll see you guys next. Coming up on the next segment is going to be Kaylee Greer. Woohoo, Kaylee. Woo. My name is Kaylee Greer and I'm a professional dog photographer. Calby One has been monumental in this journey of mine. I have the opportunity to pull from years and combine professional experience, like the support system at the touch of a button. KelbyOne.com. Hey everyone, my name is Rob Foldy. I'd like to invite you to check out my new class on how to take awesome sports and action photos using just your iPhone. Maybe you've tried shooting with your phone before and you're frustrated because your, your content's just missing the mark a little bit. We're gonna unlock all of the secret features that you need to know so that you can start getting better sports and action photos today. We're gonna cover a lot of things in this class. We're gonna have a lot of fun. We're gonna cover everything from still photography and all the kind of various options we have there, from regular still photos. We're gonna cover burst mode, live photos. We're gonna kind of move over into video a little bit and talk about how to quickly get to video right from your camera, 
how to take slow-mo videos. We're gonna talk about things like lens choices, how to use the, the different lenses that, that this iPhone or any other iPhone you might have are gonna have available to you. We're gonna talk about storytelling and how to not only get just the, the peak action moments, but also some of those in-between moments that really help you tell the story holistically from start to finish. We have a lot of really, really cool scenes here at this park. We're here at the, at the skate park. We also have baseball. We're working with some great models. We have some really great people that are just here enjoying the park that we're gonna get some content of as well. Come check it out, it's gonna be awesome. You're gonna learn a lot and you're gonna have a lot of fun. It's available exclusively on kelbyone.com. Hey guys, I'm Tubby and I'm gonna show you two really cool products that we at B-Flat World sell. So the first one is our duo boards, which are double-sided hyper-realistic backdrops for food and product photographers. They come in two sizes. This is the larger side. We have all different types of textures and designs. These are some of the new ones that came out recently. And they also, there's a bag option available for them. And our other product, which is what we actually started the company with, it's called a V-flat. It's a foldable V-flat and it's used for portrait and studio photographers to control light on their subjects to either add light with the white side or use the black side to uh, subtract light or, or even block like an unwanted uh, window light coming in. This segment of The Grid is brought to you by Canon. And we are back. And on this segment, we're bringing in Kaylee Greer. I love just her. love Kaylee. Yeah! I don't there know she is! Yet, so Kaylee! <laughs> Yay! Mm -mm. I get to be on The Grid digitally. I'm so excited. <laughs> you know what's so funny, Kaylee, is yesterday I was thinking about, you know, all the different people that we we're going to bring on the show. And when I came think, to think about you, I was like, one of the things I love about Kaylee is that when we're shooting with her, um, she is just so much fun to work with. And she always sings these fun little songs. And you did. <laughs> and I thought, I wonder if I should say that. But then you sang. So I was like, yeah, that's just, you know, part of her character and, and style. And um, it's just so sweet. I always love hearing her little bops that she makes up <laughs> bops that's such a great way to put it <laughs> thank you my mom said i came out of the womb singing i believe this i do for believe some that reason. <laughs> yep I, I can totally believe it with you kaylee <laughs> kathy it's great to see you uh, you look incredible hilmar as always thank you perfect gorgeous christina you guys are killing it girls who run the world isn't that a song i think so yeah okay <laughs> is it a song you should know <laughs> yeah, you should know. I think it's Beyonce. Actually. Sing it, Kaylee. Sing it. <laughs> <laughs> Who run the world? That's right. And then girls. I think <laughs> I did it opposite. <laughs> so I did this class with Kaylee one time where um, it, the whole thing was about just like her stories, different stories from different photo shoots that she had done. It was the most fun class to just hear all the different adventures that she had been on. And um, one of the things that you know, when I got to hear that is I got to hear some of the stories about how she got started. So one of the things I thought maybe you could share today with us is um, when was that moment that you knew you wanted to be a full time photographer? Oh, that well, that's an amazing question, because never in a million years did I ever think I could be a full time photographer, let alone a full time dog photographer. <laughs> you know, it's like, oh, that's not really a real job. You know, that's a, like a job from like a made up world where like unicorns and cotton candy and rainbows exist, you know, but um, <laughs> basically what happened was. I started after college, I got a job at Apple, which was cool and it was fine and it was good, but um, I realized that I worked very hard in college to like pursue kind of all these big ideas and dreams only really to end up um, as kind of a, I, I hate to say it, but like a glorified computer salesperson at Apple. And so I, 
at Apple, I felt, okay, well, I love the culture here, and I learned all kinds of amazing stuff about how to treat customers, right? And then also that um, the culture that they had where they, like, uh, uh, accepted this kind of wacky, whimsical, crazy artist sort of person. Um, so I loved that about it. But really, like I said, in the end, I was, I was selling computers, and I thought, well, I have to step back and really check myself. What is it that I, like, worked so hard for my whole life? What is it that I have to give to the world? Because I know I have something inside me that's more than, than just this. I'm not that passionate about you know, technology. So I asked myself, well, what is it that I'm passionate about? And the answer was always dogs. Um, from the very beginning, it was d dogs have always been my reason, you know? Um, so I thought, okay, well, you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to start to go to the shelter. I'm going to go volunteer at the shelter. And I'm just going to um, go spend time with the dogs once or twice a week after my shift at Apple, just to see if that gives you know me some sort of purpose that I'm looking for. And in the beginning, it was genuinely just to, you know, like clean their cages and take the dogs for walks and, you know, just spend time with the dogs doing enrichment or whatever, do the laundry, like whatever they needed, right? Um, and it was there that I met all these amazing dogs with all these amazing stories and these huge personalities. And I realized, seeing it from the inside out on the volunteer side, that these dogs had photos that were being taken of them that were just quickly happening upon intake, right? So the dogs were looking quite, like, scared and confused. They were in this brand new place, and they were chained to the wall, getting their photo taken very, very quickly. And then that photo is what went out to the world to represent them. Right. And so it's like people were seeing these photos of, of dogs that could potentially add to their family in this little tiny thumbnail size. And um, that's all that dog had to tell the world their story. And it, it kind of blew my mind. I thought, oh, my gosh, you know, if their only chance lies in a single photograph, maybe we can do better. And I wasn't that good at photography, really. <laughs> I just had a point and shoot little like a like a like a Canon cool pics. Is that a Canon? I don't know. You know, it was a very, <laughs> I don't know if that was like, like a, a point Nikon and or shoot. Whatever it was. <laughs> but it was like, a, you know, one of those just little point and shoot things that was maybe like a hundred bucks at Best Buy kind of thing at the time. And that's what I was using, but it was better than what the dogs had. And so I realized very quickly that those photos that I took more time with, that I was trying to draw out those big spirits and personalities, that was making a difference. And it like blew my mind. I couldn't believe it. Photography had the potential to save a life, to, to rewrite the ending to a dog words, story. Right? Amazing. Exactly, exactly. So long story short, that's what happened. I just started to go to the shelter, take the pictures there, realized it was making a difference, and I continued with that very passionately, um, concurrent, right, with my job at Apple, and then eventually realized that, oh my gosh, people are starting to ask me, because they recognize me, right? They're like, oh, that's the dog girl from the, from the, the dog photography girl from the shelter. The and so girl. then people would start to ask me, oh, hey, like, I know you do the dog photos. Would you photograph, like, my mom's dog for her birthday that's coming up for, you know, 50 bucks or whatever? And <laughs> at the time, I was like, oh, you want to pay me, like, money? Like, 50 bucks to take it? Okay. You know? <laughs> wow. Okay. So I started to get more and more requests for, for me to do this for people for their personal dogs. And I, I kind of started to have to turn down the request because I was working at Apple, right? Like I had shifts that were like kind of getting in the way. And that's when I stopped and said, what the heck am I doing? I'm staying at this job that's preventing me from taking money for this thing that I love so much. Um, so that's where that's kind of all those things slammed together. And it became a reality that I, I became slowly over time a professional dog photographer, which is the best job on earth. I love that story. Great you know, story. I think it's just really telling that you were following your passion and then that's what led you to becoming full-time at it um, and that's yeah. the beauty of Haley. you listen to her talking and you can feel all that passion and then you go and see those pictures and you're like whoa like you have no idea <laughs> how many people like do you love dogs do you have to see my friends oh. kaylee's pictures <laughs> i show your instagram so to some of everybody i meet <laughs> Kaylee, oh, I remember sweet. your first class I here because I was one of the assistants for that. And just I to remember. watch you groan, how, how you've grown from that first class. But that was one of the things I remember in first meeting you and assisting for that was just your passion. It was like infectiously contagious. So oh, and just, Kathy, just, thank you. Well, to have seen you from your first class to where you are now, I didn't know who you were. And then you came in and did that class and I followed you and watched your growth and it's and what's really cool about it is just the changes changes you've made for those dogs. You're, you, how many dogs you've become their voice in this passion of yours. Yes, you've gone in other directions too, but at the heart of why you went there is what's so impressive and inspiring to me is that you've, yes. you've stayed true to that of what, what, 
what started you in that to begin with that that passion is still there with you and still the basis so I, I love it, and it's one of the things that is very endearing to me about you, and following you has been awesome since that first uh-huh. class. That's so humbling. That's the nicest thing in the world. It's I appreciate deserved. that. Thank you. I just feel, I feel like you can't fake passion. So when I talk to people no. about like what they photograph, it's like it's got to be the best thing on earth to them, right? Because if, if they're not absolutely in love with the subject, the thing that they're photographing, I think it you can tell, right? Like you can tell when somebody's absolutely, absolutely in love and so passionate versus when it's a paying job, you know what I mean, right? Like, and it's a means to an end. Like Hilmar is a great example with her family photography and the, the photos that she does of her children. Like there is so much, what a dream, what a story is in those photos. And it can't be duplicated. It's not replicated anywhere in the industry because of her passion. But it's one of those tools that like you might be born with and you're, it's such a huge, huge, like, um, asset i guess as a creative right like you you just you 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 treat it well and you love it and you make sure you never burn out on it right because it's like the fire that's under your ass can i say ass oh gosh scott's gonna he's gonna get rid of me he's gonna (laughs) nix me i'm off the instructor list i'm I'm (laughs) off the photoshop world (laughs) but really it's that fire right that's under you all the time burning you when you're up at 2 3 a.m and you're just got to keep going because it's the thing that means the most in the whole world to you and it just it kind of um i guess it sort of just like lights the path the whole way i've never really had to stop and say like oh god what's next i feel lost or i don't know what's coming next because it's always the path is just kind of blazing before me. I can see it on fire. It's so clear for me, like what's next all the time. Um, and I guess that must be, I guess that must be passion. I know passion sometimes like a bit of a buzzword, right? That isn't like hold a lot of weight, but I feel it in my heart and it's burning there. So I know it, it's real in this case. And you emote it like yeah, all the time, all the time. That's, I just oh, love that you. about you. Thank so you. genuine. That you can be sad and just see Kylie walking around and you're like, <laughs> <"Woo>, happy. <laughs> the energy, yes. Well, and that's another thing too. It's like I know that you've had so many adventures now um, doing this. Like you've traveled all around the world getting to shoot different dogs yes, and yes, yes. Um, getting to see different places. And so one of the things I wanted to ask you was um, what was your all-time favorite place to shoot? Oh, my. Oh, my goodness. Ah. It's a tie. I think it's a tie. I photographed in one of the clearest lakes in the world in New Zealand. Um, Lake, oh gosh, I'm going to say it wrong. They're going to get me. They're going to get me for this. Lake Tekapo, I think is how you say it. Um, I That was just like an unbelievable experience. So I started to do this thing probably in 2015 where I go half underwater with dogs. So I'm putting my camera in an underwater housing and I'm going, um, you know, kind of split. I'm doing that split shot, right? Like with the water line. Oh, my, my banks are weird. Hold on. Whoop, boop, beep, boop. This is what you get on a girl's <laughs> episode, I guess, right? <laughs> I got to fix my hair. Uh, <laughs> beep, <geez>. boop, boop. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so I did so they did these half underwater shots in, in this lake in New Zealand, and it was just so crystal clear. I felt I had to pinch myself. I kept, like, pinching myself going, like, this can't be real. What an unbelievable, like, experience that was and scenario that was. It was, uh, like, out of a fairy tale. And then the, the, the tie is that, actually, I just got back not too long ago, um, earlier this summer, from spending a, a month and change in Scotland. And I was in the Isle of Skye. And I did this hike up to this this really famous um, landmark up there, which you might know of, called the Old Man of Store, which is, like, one of the biggest landmarks on, on the Isle of Skye. And... That hike, first of all, was so hard because I'm so wildly out of shape. (laughs) But also, when I got to the top or close to the top, I turned around and I just like truly had tears. It was the most moving thing I've ever seen. And I was up there with two magical dogs. And so, you know, just being able to place like a dog, like something I'm so passionate about in that landscape and tell the story of this dog who had this like Gaelic name and she was like born there on the Isle of Skye and it was this whole beautiful story about this dog. It it was just really, uh, it was really uh, mind blowing. And I'm so grateful. God, I'm grateful every day that I get to go on such amazing adventures. I always wanted to travel my whole life, but I came from like a relatively like low socioeconomic background right so my family didn't travel like I didn't really know people who got to travel to big exciting amazing places right I'm like from one of those families that has stayed in the same town for you know hundreds of years <laughs> you know what I mean like nobody leaves nobody really does anything too super adventurous um 
So it's weird. It's been weird breaking out of that mold, but it's always been my biggest dream. So I'm just grateful beyond words. I carry gratitude in my pockets in droves every day. Love that. That's so important to do every day, you know, just to um, really be grateful for the things that you get to do. And I think, um, you know, just hearing you speak and talking about just following your passion and that thing that lights you inside, it's just inspiring me too. Like even just hearing you guys talk about it, I feel like, oh, I want to go, you know, do something and create something. Um, It's making me feel like invigorated. So, oh, I'm so happy. Uh, well, you only get le- one shot, right? Like, as far as we know, we only get one shot at this thing. Not a dress rehearsal. Right? Exactly, say. Kathy. Exactly. And not to bring down the mood too much, but I lost a friend of mine kind of recently who was 37. And he had cancer, and it went very quickly, and it just blew my world apart. Because it was like, oh, like, nothing's guaranteed. We don't get, you know, we all end up in the same place in the end, right? Like, we don't get a guarantee that every day is going to be... um there for us right in the future so like what is holding me back what is scaring me because it's it's nothing compared to you know going get, getting to the end of my life and looking back and going like god i wish i wish i would have i should have right. i could have you know when i was young and full of spirit and my my bones weren't achy which by the way they're starting to get achy but <laughs> i mean it's all well earned i guess right like my my bo- my limbs and my bones are starting to crack and i'm like oh my god <laughs> I'm old. I asked a friend of mine, like, I'm like, listen to this. What does this sound like? A friend of mine who's a chiropractor, and he was like, oh, yeah, no, that's arthritis. <laughs> <laughs> too young. Oh, close with my gray hairs that's hiding under this hat. Perfect. <laughs> hey, but, you know, it's, I think um, by doing what you love, that keeps you young, too. So. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. It's all uh, in your heart, right? What do they say? What's that saying? Um you're only young at heart. I was and you, say and you live what's in field. your heart. That's the best part, Kaylee. Yeah. You live yeah. what's to in me, your heart. To me, it is so amazing how in this, like a couple of minutes that you were talking there, it was like boom, 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 boom. And I'm pretty sure that people are going to get up and be like, I have to find my passion. I have to do my best. <laughs> I have to. Yeah. I agree. Oh, my gosh. I hope so. <laughs> and you have oh. to follow Kaylee if you're not already. Yes. So if you want to check her out at Photoshop World, she's going to be teaching with us. Um, Kaylee, is there anything you can share with us really quick about uh, the class that you're going to be teaching? Anything you're excited about or can tease us with? Yes, yes. Oh, I realized that you you also have another awesome guest, so I should really hurry. But yes, for the first time ever, I'm actually doing a full Photoshop and Lightroom editing course um, on dog photography and how I process all my photos. So I'm going to take a photo from fully raw, straight out of the camera, all the way to the fully sparkle and shine finished piece. People ask me a lot about my editing process. Um, And so I'm super excited. I'm going to show you all the sneaky tricks. You know, dogs are on leashes. Typically the owners are right there on the shot. Um, Kind of, you know, making standing guard, making sure the dog is safe. So I have to deal with like removing people from frames a lot. And again, leashes and stuff like that. So there's a lot of cool tricks that that I'm going to show you. And it's the first time I'm ever doing a full editing course. So I'm really excited. Yay, that is super exciting, Kaylee. I can't wait to see it. And um, thank you so much for joining us today. (laughs) It's always a pleasure to um, have you either on the show or just around in the studio. Um, You really do inspire so many. So thank you so much for following your passion and um, sharing it with all of us. Thank you so much, the three of you beautiful ladies, for having me. I can't thank you enough. Four, I really appreciate four. it. I always love to make a, make a little pop-up appearance on the grid. So I love it. You guys have an awesome rest of your, uh, rest of your show, and uh, I'll see you at Photoshop World. Okay, thank you so see much. See you, Kaylee. <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Coming up next, we're going to have Victoria Pavlov, and I see some more comments coming in. I'll make sure to read those.
with this class, I would want to share with you my techniques I learned for the last 10 years. I learned every day and I want you to start uh, your painting workflow, your painting experience with easiest steps. So it will be much, much easier for you than it was for me. And I hope you will like it as much as I do. From this class, you will learn how to organize your workspace because workspace can make your uh, workflow easier and faster. Also, you will learn how to adjust your uh, brushes, how you can customize your brushes, how you, you can organize your Creative Cloud uh, libraries, how you can start your painting from scratch or using your own image. Digital painting for photographers will bring your photography experience to another level. Please come and join me at kelby1.com. This segment of The Grid is brought to you by Platypod, the world's most compact tripod base. And we're back. And um, really quick before I bring on our next guest, I just wanna read out some of these comments. First, I wanna give a big shout out to Ron Pinky for donating to the Worldwide Photo, Photo Walk. Thank you, Ron. He says, um, what a show, ladies rock. And um, don't forget, <laughs> if you haven't already, you can still go to worldwidephotowalk.com to make a donation and help those children in Kenya. Um, we've also got Margie Ro Rosenstein in the house from Oldsmar saying you ladies are rocking it. I want to give a shout out back to Margie because she's our um, in-house graphics person. She's also um, an incredible, hardworking woman who um, makes most of the graphics that you see for Kelby One. Um, she does a lot of the um, class graphics and different things like that. Um, Can she's I been... just say real quick about Margie? Yeah. That's 15 years I later. I am here because of Margie. Margie brought me into the world of Kelby One and meeting these wonderful folks. So thank you, Margie. Thanks, you rock. Margie. We love you. Margie and... rocks. I love her so much. Yes, she does. And um, we've got Belinda Krause and B. Morell all giving us um, some shout outs and B Morel says I can't wait for Photoshop world me either I just love it so on our last segment here um, we did have another Photoshop world instructor whom I adore Victoria Pavlov as a digital artist hey Victoria um, she's hello. tuning in from Atlanta hello everyone I love your hair it looks great thank you I tried <laughs> thank you <laughs> good to see you girls and can be one members it's so good to see you too, Victoria. It's always a pleasure having you around. Um, you know, we were just talking on break that um, we miss like being able to see everyone in person, but maybe one day we'll be able to see each other soon again. Um, Victoria is always okay. so sweet and kind to be around. So. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. So one of the things that, if I remember this correctly, is that you were you started off you're like a digital artist but i think you started off as a classical painter right yes all right so can you tell us a little bit about how you first learned about photoshop world and making that switch over from classical painting into uh, photoshop yes uh, actually it was uh, maybe a little bit strange because i was in armenia and it was um country was uh, in the middle of the war, no electricity and anything, no supply. And our neighbor told me about Photoshop. And um, we had a little about one hour uh, 
of electricity and she did show me Photoshop. It was one, it was version one and I saw Photoshop and that's it. I felt in love. Till now, it's my absolute favorite application to work with. I love, love, love Photoshop. So it was in a time of like scarcity, really, it sounds like that, um, you, you know, like you said, supplies were short. I think I do remember you sharing that with me one time that it was just like, you you know, you need paint, you need all different I kinds of paint. things in order to create your art. So when you saw Photoshop, it was like opened up a door for you. Yes, absolutely. It was like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. And it was completely different world. It was it was like a breathe. It's still, still today, it's everything. I love other applications like Illustrator and um, other Adobe applications, but Photoshop is very, very special to me. And so, so you still paint, though? Excuse me? So you still paint like, like yes, on a canvas? Yes, yes, every day I'm trying at least, every day, yeah. So, but you like the with actual paint and stuff. So every day yes. you actually still um, get to paint and do your thing. Do you ever incorporate what you do um, in the practical world into? Uh, then do you take it into Photoshop later, or do you keep the two separate? I keep the two things separate. How do you think I, that painting background, Victoria? How do you think the painting background? How did that? transpire over like how did that help you when you took it to a digital format so to say so to speak uh digital world is different if in traditional world you need to have some sense of um art inside of you in a digital you can learn it's much 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 easier and a more more enjoyable so being a uh, trained as a um, traditional painter, it's helped me with s things like uh, proportions, human or animal proportions and everything like that. But, but uh, people always ask me, do I need to be trained as a painter to be able to paint in Photoshop or Illustrator? And my answer all the time, no. So if you have any experience, good for you. If not, no problem. Well, I think it's just wonderful. I love um, seeing some of the stuff that you've done digitally. It's always so inspiring. And I'm, sometimes I'm like, your how does she amazing. even do that? Thank you. So what are some of your greatest inspiration for creating things? People. 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 I love, I love, um, in general, I love people. and. Uh, I'm a portrait painter, portrait photographer, so a people, human, and people's soul, it's more, um, it's always fascinated to me, and this is everything. So inspiration on, I'm getting my inspiration from people around me. Yeah. This is easier. Yeah. Is there something that you're currently working on or excited about? Yes, currently I'm working on, I'm trying to open my exhibit by the end of this year, we will see. So uh, I'm working on a few pieces digitally and traditionally, so we'll see. I'm working on my new book, um, it's a secret, but also I released my new book just last month or this month. Yes, this Congratulations. book. Congratulations. Yeah. That's Thank gorgeous. you, it's my new Yes, and I'm working on my Photoshop classes, on my painting, uh, photo restoration, and everything else digitally. And and we adopt a new puppy. His name is Lasso. He's nine months old. Oh, uh, I saw oh, pictures. So yes, so that's adorable. so exciting. Thank you, thank you. He's adorable. And then um, you're going to be one of our instructors at Photoshop World, so I have to ask, is there something that you can share with us that um, is going to, you know, be in your Photoshop World class or something that you want to tease us with or something you're excited about um, for the class? Yes, actually, I'm excited about my two classes in equal ways because uh, my first, my one of my classes is um, 
creating background for a digital workflow from scratch. So what you will need to learn how to create your unique background is just a Photoshop, nothing else. And we, we will, I will show you how you can create something very sparkly and way in a, uh, also in a, some uh, more traditional way, in more uh, modern way. So we will talk about different, completely different um, backgrounds for your creations. You can use those backgrounds in photography or painting. And my second class is um, a photo restoration. Photoshop went through many stages and in the current stage, photo rest restoration in Photoshop become much, much, much easier. So I'm very excited to share with you my new way of, uh, easiest way of um, restoring your photos in a Photoshop and I just discovered a lot of new old photos of my family and we will be restoring them with you. So I'm excited. Oh, that is super exciting. So I'm excited. Some about new that. techniques for photo restoration. I bet that's gonna be a really great class. A lot of people could use that, I'm sure. Raise your hand. You. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <Me too. laughs> well, thank you so much, Victoria, for continuing to be an inspiration to us and thank for joining you. us on the show today. My uh, pleasure. Always good to see you. It is always good to see you. Hopefully we can actually give you a hug in person at some point soon. Yes. Not just yes. virtual. <laughs> yes. Tight <Nice> hug. <laughs> yes. I miss those hugs. And we'll be sure to check out your classes at Photoshop World. Um, coming soon. It's about, what, two weeks away. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Before we know it. So join yeah. all of us that yeah. are here today. Yep. And then, yeah. um, so, but before I go, I have to definitely also, you know, since I have Hilmar and Kathy both here who are also inspiring women, um, I have just a couple questions for each of them. Um, Hilmar, one of the yeah. things that I am so inspired from you is how you juggle, you know, being a full-time photographer. I mean, that's like her, she's a career photographer while juggling single being a mom. single mom and yes. has two children and so you know can you please tell us how do you juggle that well it's a balancing act and i want to make sure that everybody knows it's not that i'm single this mom i just don't have absolutely any family no backup it's just the two, the two of my kids and and me so uh balancing the whole thing is it's kind of crazy but at the same time it's just like why did i wanted to do i wanted to be a photographer and i wanted to be able to be in the life of my kids so i incorporate my kids in every single thing that i do and it is so magical to see how creative and how they talk about the photography that they that we do together and how they understand like when i go to tell everyone to fill my classes even if they're gonna go in front of the camera or not probably my kids are behind the scenes with me so they're watching everything um that i'm doing so i think that my my job is actually part of my parenting because at the same time i'm teaching my kids that i'm doing what i love what is my passion and i'm inspiring them to do the same and if if they're creative and they want to pursue any career that is something creative that usually people say that ah oh, that's not a real job well, it is. I'm showing them that it is. Obviously, is it is hard. Um, I don't have any family to drop them off and just go do something. So, but at the same time, is everything that that I wanted. And and if I look back to six, seven years ago, if you ask me back then, what would I want to be doing? Right now, this is the life that I wanted to be living with my That's kids and, and where I am in my career. So I'm extremely um, thankful for it. And, and I'm so thankful that they're part of, of everything that I do. And and they're watching because to me, um, it's very important that everything that I do to be aware that they're watching and somehow I'm inspiring them to do whatever they, they want to do, but with full passion and, and with both things fits in it's just not know that i'm that is something that i'm doing just after hours it's just something that i jumped in in the worst time of my life and 
and you know make it happen and 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 just gave my all just to 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 make it happen and to be where i am today well you truly did you know you um just didn't let anything stop you and you um are such an inspiration for going after your dreams and not letting um you know the negativity or the nose kind of get in your head and instead you just went for it and um you're making it and you're doing such great work and um recently you were just published in the new york times i meant to bring in i have the new york times i meant to bring it in so i could show it but yeah she even got um asked to photograph some things for kids and um yeah, and that's the magic thing, and and I and I love listening to Kaylee talking about it today because it's just like when you are in the right path, things happen. And the New York Times is not something that I pursue and I went for it. It's something that magically happened. They contacted me and they told me like, do you want to go and do this? And I'm like, it's the freaking New York Times, <laughs> you know? So they recognize it's your passion, so. There you go. Yeah, yeah, and I think that it's energy, and I think that there is like, like when when you really want something, and 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 it's your passion, things align, and the universe aligns for things to happen, and 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 you have, I mean, there are ups and downs, and I think that's an artist we have like sometimes like like we question ourselves, is this is where we want to be? What should I be doing to to keep growing? And the thing is that everything, if you are doing what you love, everything floats and everything just happens magically. And don't you think like good energy attracts good energy? I mean, look at all the ladies that were on here talking today. One of the common denominators I see, do you agree, Christina? Absolutely. Is positive energy. I mean, just good energy creates and emotes good energy and kind of attracts it together. And It is magical, like Victoria, Kaylee, Karen. Yes. And I mean, it's just, Everyone. It's, it's just, this is my favorite great episode ever. I just love all the power Aww. and Kathy, Kathy's always there behind the scene. And I just love, this is not my you. comfort zone. You all know this, right? <laughs> like 15 years, first there. time. Like every single Photoshop word in the classes, there has um, the magic of Kathy there for years and years. And Christina, you have no idea how amazing it is to work with Christina. Christina put all of yeah. these classes together. Uh, Christina yes. is always giving us our the best energy and and she's like a power machine just making things happen. And yes. it's just so beautiful. We have became friends after a while of working together and I just adore her to that. I mean, I just love to see you there having all that light on you today and, and for people to recognize your face and see that that you are the one just like just with your magic wand just making things happen she is definitely the one with the magic wand and also another mom behind the scenes that just yeah admire for what you do as well lady keeping your passion and your kids like hilmar i mean mine are grown but you're in that same boat yeah i don't know you know i think there's kind of a little theme that i'm hearing throughout today's show but it's just about really um, following the things that set you on fire. And so I was told a long time ago, do what you love, you know? And, um, and even though it was scary, cause you know, back then it was like, I was going to school to be a filmmaker and it's like, you don't think of that as being lucrative, you know, like you are told to be a doctor or a lawyer or something like that. And yes. So, um, college, get the degree. I ended up, I, th I thought I was going to go into college and go into, um, <laughs> business. And I ended up, I was working at a Chili's as a hostess. And someone that I worked with was a waitress and asked me, hey, would you want to volunteer on a film set for a couple of weeks in New Orleans? And I was like, sure, Thank I'll do goodness. that. You know, that sounds fun. And it was like the first time I walked onto that set, I knew you had this it right is what here. I want to do yeah. for the rest of my life, you know? And so I just loved being on set and like in the action of things. And, um, you know, definitely being on camera is not my comfort zone either. So thanks for tagging along hey, for the fun. We were backing each other up on this. <laughs> You but, guys are killing you. Girl, you girls are killing it today. It's just so beautiful, and 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 I'm just work closely with both of you, and and it's is energy, and it's magic, and it's power, big time. I just love you guys both. We love you guys too. And, you, Victoria, I miss your hugs and our long conversations on Photoshop World. We have to make that happen again soon. Absolutely. Yes. 
Well, this has yes. been such a fun show, and um, I'm so glad we were able to do this and highlight some of the people in the industry and people that are following their dreams. I hope it inspires people out there, too, to follow your dreams. And, um, and to step out of your comfort zone. Yes. Lean into the discomfort and just go for it. Um, so we do need to give away some prizes. Hilmar, you can go ahead and give out the prizes. Yes, I always wanted to do this, to be the one that says who won, like who I'm making what? somebody else day today. So the travel photography book is going to Rhonda L. Makisak. I hope I said your last name right. I'm sorry if I didn't. I'm used to it because nobody says my right, so I'm sorry. Um, so the other book, How Do I Do That in Live Room, is going to Tara Parekh. Yay! Platypod Good Snacks. I love my Platypod Good, ne good Snacks. The, it goes to Sherry Cottrell. Congratulations. And um, the On One Effects 2022 goes to Shannon Armstrong. Congratulations, Sharon! Then we have the B flats, the big B flats. I love my B flats. I I just cannot shoot without them. They are like part of my my set. They are like they are bouncing light, cutting light. They are magical. Um, the winner of the B flats is Ginny. Congratulations, Ginny! I hope you enjoy them. They are super amazing. And then the one duo boards XL that they are actually uh, um, also. So by um, B flat, they go to Barbara Blutzworth and congratulations, Barbara. I'm so sorry um, if I murder anybody's last name. I truly apologize. <laughs> it's all good. Thank you, Helmar. Make sure if you are one of the winners, you go ahead and send us an email to gridprize at kelby1.com. Be sure to include your mailing address or shipping address so that way we can get you your prize to you and we'll verify it um, after the show. So um, really quick, I want to give Paula Stone a yes. shout out. She says Happy it's her birthday. birthday. Happy birthday, Happy birthday Paula. Birthday. Um, thank you so <laughs> Happy much. Happy birthday. <laughs> I appreciate everyone tuning in and um, staying with <laughs> us. I hope you enjoyed the show today. And next week we'll have Eric and Scott Perfect. back in the chairs. And see you oh, Photoshop maybe we world. Can, we yeah. can take over again. <laughs> <laughs> Photoshop world. <laughs>